All right. So we'll move on to exercise 4D. So uh, we'll start question number 15 as well. We'll discuss this one as well. A light inelastic string of length R has one end attached to a fixed point O. A particle P of mass M is attached to the other end P. Uh, the other end of P is held with OP horizontal and the string taut. Okay, so you have the string. Uh, initially, uh, you're holding the string horizontally. Okay, uh, so P is then projected vertically downwards with speed root GR. Okay. Make sure you draw the diagram uh, properly. So the fixed point is O, and then you keep the uh, string horizontal. So this is the particle. And they say initially, so this is the O is the fixed point. So P is the particle. Initially, you throw it down with the speed root GR. Okay. Uh, okay. So then find in terms of uh, theta M and G the tension in the string when OP makes an angle theta with the horizontal. So these are really important things. Okay. So they have told you now the angle is theta, but they tell you where to mark theta. I mean, with respect to. So they say you should mark the angle theta with the horizontal. So those are important stuff. Okay. So over here, you can understand how the circular motion goes. So it goes like this, right? Okay. So it, this is the circular part. Okay. So basically what you need to do here is take another point on this circular path. Okay, take another point on this circular path. Okay, so let's say the speed is V here. So what they're saying here is uh, when you make an angle theta with the horizontal, so this is the horizontal, right? So as you can see here, this is the horizontal. So you're uh, throwing the particle downward. So it's going in a circular motion downward. So this is the angle theta. It's just, I took a general point. Okay. Okay, so they're saying find in terms of theta, M and G, the tension in the string. So at this point, whatever the tension you have, so you can see you have a tension here. Okay, so you have the tension here. What else do you have? You also have the weight, right? You also have the weight acting downward. So these are the forces we have at this point. All right. Okay, so we are supposed to find the tension in terms of M, G, and R. Okay, so let's get started. Always. Uh, when it comes to, uh, okay, so always when it comes to uh, circular motion, I mean, vertical circular motion, you know, there are only two rules, right? So what are the two rules? You apply conservation of energy and you apply F equal MA towards the center, right? All right, so uh, let's apply the first principle. Okay, so as I told, again, let me tell, it's, uh, on, there are only two concepts to use here. Always you apply conservation of energy and you apply F equal M A towards the center. That's all you've got to do here. Okay, so let's apply uh, conservation of energy. So by the law of conservation of energy. Okay, so by the law of conservation of energy, you can apply, uh, so at the beginning, Okay, so at the beginning we have kinetic energy. Okay, so you have kinetic energy. You can consider, uh, I mean, potential energy uh, basically at any point. So over here, the lowest point over here, you could consider all the lowest point of the circular path can be considered. So uh, any of those things are fine. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, or, or you could just say kinetic energy, uh, the, the loss from, I'm oh, sorry, gain. So from here to here, you are having a kinetic energy gain and you have a potential energy loss because you are moving down a certain height, right? So you could say kinetic energy gain equal potential energy loss. So any of those things work. Okay, so uh, I will just arbitrarily mark this point as GP0 and say, can take this as the height. Okay, GP0, you can give it at any point you prefer, okay? 
uh, entirely up to you. So at this point, uh, at this point, you have kind of tendency at the beginning. And you have potential energy at the beginning, right? Because you are above the uh, GP starting point. And then at the end over here, you only have a uh, kind of energy. Okay, you only have kind of energy because uh, you have the GP zero level. So guys, as I told you, you could just uh, write this as KE gain. Okay, so KE gain, if you subtract final minus initial, you get KE gain. And this is the PE loss, why is it a loss? So these are stuff you have learned in M2, right? Because you're moving downwards. When you're going to a downward movement, it's a potential energy loss. Kinetic energy is a gain. So that these two should be equal to each other. All right. So uh, you, uh, you can just substitute the values. So potential energy uh, is MGH, the height. Uh, so how we can get the height by using the, uh, get to the this, uh, string of length R. So the length of the string is R. And this is the theta. So this is going to be R cos theta. H is going to be R sine theta. H is going to be R sine theta. Okay, this is R cos R sine theta. Equals kind of energy gain. Half m, uh, half m v square. So the final point, the energy, uh, kind of energy is half m v square over here. Half m u square, in the case of u here, it's root gr. So half m u square is root gr square. So when you square the root gr, the root removes. Okay, so uh, let's simplify now. So M cancels off with everyone. You get here GR sine theta equals half V square minus half uh, root GR square. It's going to be half GR, right? Because uh, when the root GR squares, the root removes and you get GR. Okay, so I'll uh, multiply everyone by two to remove the half. So two GR sine theta v square plus gr. Guys, can you see what I, what I just did over here? I multiplied this equation by 2. Okay, so I'm trying to make v square the subject now. So when you make v square the subject, you get here 2gr sine theta plus gr. So this is the v square value. Can you see? So the speed. So the speed at this general point. Basically, you can see I have a general point because I don't have an exact value for theta. I have the speed at the general point. So it's uh, GR plus two GR sine theta. Okay, so this is the first thing that we do. All right, so now let's apply, uh, sorry, two, uh, two GR sine theta minus GR. Yeah, yeah. the plus G, sorry. Because no, no. I have made an error here, right? This part over here, I have made an error. This is V square minus half GR. Right, over here, this is a minus, right? And that minus, when you do come to the other side, should be a plus. Okay, this point, this minus continues here and then you take it to the other side, it becomes a plus, okay? All right, guys, so we have applied the law of conservation of energy. So now let's apply the next main rule. So the next main rule is uh, we apply F equal MA towards the center at the general point. Okay, so apply F equal MA towards the center at the general point. All right, so how does it work? Uh, so this is the point that we're talking about. So towards the center means, I think you can see you need to extend your lines this way. So this theta angle comes over here, right? Okay, so we need to resolve the uh, mg. All right, we need to resolve the mg. So uh, how do we uh, take the angle to resolve the mg? All right, so I'll draw a tangential line like this. <clears throat> okay, so guys, over here, if this is theta, 
Okay, so since this is the 90 degree over here, this should be 90 minus theta, right? And if this is 90 minus theta, you guys should see that this is again a theta. This is again 90 minus theta and therefore this is again theta. All right, so you should be good with the geometry part and now you can resolve because the thing is I need to resolve forces, uh, take all the forces that are acting toward the away from the center. So at, at this point you can see mg, we can resolve in a direction tangential to the uh, uh, circular part and uh, perpendicular. So you can see when I uh, resolve the mg to the perpendicular part, I get here an mg sine theta, resolving it this way. All right, so I get here mg sine theta. Okay, so I don't need the mg cos theta. This way you get mg cos theta. That's not required because I'm only concerned about the forces that are acting either towards or away from the center. So at this point, mg sine theta, you can see when I resolve it away from the angle, it gives me a component that is acting away from the center. So that's what I require here. So now let's apply uh, F equal MA. Okay, so how does it work? So uh, towards the center, you have the tension. Away from the center, you have minus mg sine theta, right? Tension to acting towards the center, mg sine acting away, therefore it's a negative. So those are the only two forces acting uh, in that particular direction, okay? Uh, equals, so centripetal, uh, so mass into centripetal acceleration, you can either go with v square over r or r omega square. So since we have the v square value, we'll go with v square over r. So radius, is it correct? The r value, yeah, our radius of the circular motion is r. So in that case, this should be r. So be careful if the radius of your circular motion is 2r, you should replace it with 2r, okay? Uh, okay, so now let's input the value p minus mg sine theta m over r times v square because they ask you to find the tension in terms of the, uh, theta m and g yeah so we'll input the v square value that's 2 g r sine theta plus g r so t minus m g sine theta so m uh, i think you can see r cancels out both of it both of these guys right this is 2mg r sine theta over r plus mg r over r. So t minus mg sine theta, the r cancels out. And you get here 2mg sine theta plus mg, right, can you see? So you get here at the end of the day, minus mg sine theta goes here, adds with this, and you get end up getting here, uh, three mg sine theta plus mg. Can you see? So this is the, uh, this is the tension, right? Three mg sine theta plus mg, okay? So this is the answer. All right, guys, moving on to part B. They say given that the string will break when the tension in the string is 2 mg newton, find the three significant figures, the angle between the string and the horizontal when the string breaks. Okay, so they are telling you that this string breaks if the tension uh, is 2 mg. All right, so we have an uh, expression for the uh, tension, isn't it? We already have an expression for the tension. All you have to do is make the tension equal to 2 mg. If the tension equals 2mg, the string breaks. Simple as that. Okay, so all you have to do now is make a t to the subject. So mg is common to everyone. So mg cancels out. You get here 2 equals 3 sine theta plus 1. Right? This doesn't become a 0. Though the mg uh, cancels out. There's a 1 here. So 2 minus 1 is 1 equals to 3 sine theta. And you get sine theta equals. 1 over 3. So in other words, theta is arc sine 1 over 3. Arc sine 1 over 3. Okay, so then uh, you can type this in the cell. <coughs> uh, sine inverse. <coughs> Either you could give your answer in degree mode or radian mode. 
Okay, so be, I think best that we give this uh, normally in circular motion when you see it comes to these kinds of angles when they ask you to find the three SF, uh, it's better that you give in uh, degrees. But in the exam, they will actually specify to you whether they want it in degrees or whether they want it in radians. So that will be clearly given. So normally, uh, these kinds of angles, yeah. So you can give it in either degree or radians as long as we specify. Okay, so if it's in uh, radians, zero point three four zero rad. Okay, or you could give it in degrees as well. So 19.5 degrees. Okay. All right, so this part is uh, done then.